So hi everyone, and welcome back to Hackly. It's been a long time. So uh, yes, uh, who am I? Uh, been doing hack hack stuff and uh, and all kinds of visualizations uh, since a long time, for a long time. And I just uh, I've been doing malware, malware analysis, and I just transfer in the Flare team at Google. But I've been already eight years at Google, and. Uh, so first, I'm not an InfoViz professional. I have no formal training. I have really no idea what I'm doing. I just learned JavaScript this year. And, but on the other hand, I don't care about whatever dogma or sacred rules uh, in their religion. You know, it's like a, a bit like uh, I will break your file specs and your file formats. I will break your InfoViz rules if I have to. So you may know me for some visualizations in the past. Uh, just uh, how many of uh, is, uh, how many of you have used or known some of my visualizations? Okay, so a third. Let's put. Let's say. So yeah, yeah I've been doing this kind of stuff uh, publicly for more than a decade now. You have the URL over there, and uh, yeah, like hundreds of file format, literally. And uh, I uh, so back in 2012, I started doing that one. Uh, really started from scratch, and then I tried with very different localization just for fun, just for the challenge of uh, Arabic, Japanese, or uh, uh, French, because why not? Accents and Uberblick and, you know, all this kind of weirdness of languages. And uh, so it was a single file that I dissected, but on the other hand, it's, it was useful as an uh, um, uh, introduction for the format to many people. So basically, no, reu no reusable use case, but beneficial to a lot of people. And actually, recently, someone just did a pixel art showing my poster just uh, in, on their desk. So it's, it was funny to see uh, ac that accidentally happening in some pixel art somewhere in the world. Uh, the problem was that everything was done by hand from Inkscape. It was like I had no idea what I was doing. So basically, I was like, okay, visual ed editor. I actually started this diagram. I tried Jia. Yeah, I tried Visio, if these names ring the bell, and then I was like, Inkscape, okay, what's that? File, new, how do you do that? And so on and so on. Repeat, fail, a loop. And uh, the problem was that everything was done manually in a very clumsy way, so for any little change, even doing the 64-bit version, everything has to be redone. And then if you try the Arabic version, a lot of things get screwed up, especially because uh, Inkscape didn't handle that very well. So basically here, you have some Arabic text it's actually two fields of non-Arabic and Arabic text because Inkscape was doing that wrong. Uh, and the real problem is that also it doesn't scale with file size. Many structures are skipped full of zeros or ignored, skipped on, per, on feature, uh, structures on purpose to, 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 to make it able to fit in a normal dimension. And also is there a real need? It was fun, but do we need that on a daily basis? Probably not. It's useful to many, but not in a re so often. And another thing I learned in, on the way is that uh, InfoSec hates graphical stuff, opening any graphical tool, choosing a font, having to use a different theme. It's like your color theme is your god. And also for the usual way that uh, InfoViz uh, tackles uh, do their job, they use heavy frameworks with a lot of crazy stuff. And uh, we tend, we in InfoSec, we tend to work on local, on, on uh, closed VMs or closed network, and we have no internal, external connection. And we also don't want any privacy risk, exfiltration risk, or malware escape. So basically, our way to use things is pretty different from the usual way that InfoViz is developing things. So, an InfoViz in general is like, they have these super shiny one shots that this one is the very famous one from the, you can find on Wikipedia, very old one. But then it's not reusable for any other use case. And, uh, then also they, 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 they like some crazy frameworks and whatever. It looks super shiny, but uh, it's really a single one shot, one time use. So, the, but on the other day, on the other hand, if you look at the standard reusable visualization from InfoViz, they have very direct to the point, just a line, just the text. And we in InfoSec, what we do is we take screenshots of Hex Editor with a lot of shit on it, you know? So, uh, you know, it's like there are two interesting facts on each community, let's put it that way, even if, again, I'm definitely not a part of InfoViz. 
So I tried to automate um, imp uh, p101 initially, just adding JavaScript, and I kept failing uh, lots of times. So it's bad. Simple binary description. That's the usual. That's the original name that I came up with in 2014. So almost 10 years ago. So I beautifully failed a couple of times. Uh, so the very first version was relying on SVGJS, very primitive, but yeah, let's. I kind of gave up. And then I, on the second try, let's put it that way, thanks to the help of my colleague Rafael, I tried to dominate this thing called JavaScript and, and to do some stuff. And we actually presented about that. But we went very, in a very, we went to something very complex. We use constraint solving so that everything is aligned and everything. Perfectly, but the problem is that this constraint solving can suddenly say, hey, if your font size is null, which wouldn't make sense for a visualization, but, but if your font size is null, then the, all the equations are solved. And therefore, suddenly your complete graph is completely screwed and it's impossible to debug. So basically, that wasn't possible to extend. It was a nightmare to level, to debug. So in another failure, but I learned some stuff on the way. And then earlier this year, I decided to start, to start again. And then this is the version three of uh, Earthbud. So we return from scratch and suddenly it starts doing something. So that's the thing, right? I started, uh, this is not uh, something where I would pick in, until last year when I was doing any of the visualization, I was picking the colors manually, copy pasting them and aligning things by hand. And in this case, I just type JSON and it renders. And this is the kind of direct displays that I get. So suddenly from hours to of work for each format, suddenly you just have a couple of minutes and especially the data that you typed is reusable. And when you improve, the, of course, the, the visual rendering wasn't that nice initially. Then as, as, as when um, progressively I added new features and the same data was reusable. So it was actually very fun. And suddenly it was not a dead end. I kept reusing the same uh, the same, um, how do you say, the, the same input information. And I w repeated and I kept adding more and more formats just because it was hey, quite addictive for, to be honest. And a lot of people, I don't know if you know all the formats, but I certainly didn't. Uh, and a lot of people, uh, suggested more formats, and then with the specs, it was actually pretty easy to add new formats. So I went on and on and on. And again, the, the, the result of this is available publicly. And you know, there's uh, some stuff from the 60s to some stuff from 2022, covering a lot of uh, Mac, uh, Elf, uh, Mac, Linux, uh, Windows, uh, uh, mainframe, and so on, Nintendo Switch. And it's really, first it proved it's, the, this version of this bud proved it's doable and saves a lot of time. And I, I, I ended up doing a lot of them. So my current file has uh, too many, uh, formats in it. And it was fun. But the pro, and it, uh, even better, it's taking JSON in input, but so it's connectable to parser. So you can really automate all this information extraction. Uh, so the, the um, restrictions are always imposed uh, on it was that it could work locally in a VM with no internet connection. There's no framework and no dependency. You know, I grew up at the time where you would just initialize mod 13 in VGA and just uh, set the color of the pixels in the video memory. You know, I don't want a framework to do this kind of stuff for me, you know. And the, the, the drawback of that with working offline is that you cannot have a JavaScript module. And the SVG is generated from scratch with my own JavaScript, which ends up with a very lightweight SVG. And uh, I add a few Inkscape extras so that we can reuse them later. So first, uh, when uh, doing a lot of file visualization, I learned that there are basically three kinds of file format structure displaying because of the density. And the problem was that very early, I just tried something very experimental and I kept using exactly the same themes and without dark mode, infosec dies, and uh, especially the same fonts. So I basically, it couldn't be reusable as is. But at least all the data could be reused. So it's like all the data I put in it is, is not dead, is not uh, useless. So the three densities of information, so formats, some, when you say bit level, usually people think a bit field in a structure, and that's not bit level. It's bit level is that when there's no byte boundary and everything spreads over uh, different bytes, like JXL, BZIP2. There are, these are formats that you cannot display like the others because of sometimes they even go 
you read them in the other order. You know, you start, you read them from right to left. And Bytes is a classic one, and Charles, like uh, some PDFs, and that's uh, um, uh, Intel Hex. Uh, these, these formats are uh, Charles ba text based. In this case, you don't need the nibbles of the Hex display. So, SBUD 3 was good, but I, dis I thought mm, first it was very experiment, too experimental, and it was over engineered in case, like in the situation where. Um, it's, there's too much hard coding in it. And the other problem is that in the end, there's not an immediate need for this kind of displays. It's not like something that you will necessarily do on a daily basis. Now, I really learned the hard way with the feedback that everyone they needs a color, custom color theme encoding font, otherwise they will not use your software. And again, what's the really need it, and what do we need? Can we simply solve it? And now I transfer to Flare, and now we have slides of um, uh, threat reports to make and uh, tr trainings to do, and suddenly a simple need with an usually awful result, hex viewer with descriptions and arrows. So first, it's painful to make. Do you need to take your own screenshot? You cut the borders, then you add your arrows, and people use different tools, and people have their own standard and their own themes, and the JPEG can get ugly, and the colors are awful, and sometimes there are viewers with pink, and sometimes there are super dark mode, tiny fonts, and it changes and it changes. So first, it's painful to make because no one will change their system to make slides, right? Then it's painful to use because there are a lot of bytes. You remember the charts, the standard usual Excel charts where it's just lines and numbers. Here in the hex editor, we have a lot of data that we don't want. And to be honest, no one cares about your hex editor or your font theme. And uh, then it's hard to match ASCII and hex and the offset and size of the structure here. What's the offset of this again? It's not so clear to, oh, you have to match it. It's a mental exercise. It's easy, but it takes time if you think about it. And so, and then when you need to re-update that, what do you do? Do you actually retype the whole data? Or you manage to grab the same, the, the same file again? And where, wait, it's a malware. It's the payload. You need to decompress it. Or you need to, to just to be able to display this data again can be like super painful. And, um, then if you want localization or different layout, same here, what do you do? And uh, the data is dead anyway, it's just a screenshot. You, you cannot reuse it exactly like if I could describe a signature or I would you give you a Yara SIG and a Yara SIG, you can pre parse it, you can scan it, you can, uh, you can organize them. And here, with the way we, all the information that we pour into these screenshots is lost, basically. I mean, it's not lost, but it's definitely a dead end. So, Yet it doesn't feel like rocket science, but it's like sharing screenshot of samples hash with the unreadable font. And some people actually do that, you know? Uh, like, give me the information and not a ugly representation. I mean, it's your style, sure, I understand, but it's useless for all of us. It's a dead end for the data. So yeah, let's try a demo because it's public actually. Uh, and now I realize I don't have internet here, so maybe. <laughs> uh, so, um, Let's me check. So I give you the URL, so you you can play with it directly already if you want. Uh, so basically, this is what it does. I'm going to use a local copy on my side. So basically, uh, that's just buds uh, local. Uh, so um, you have uh, different structures. So uh, so um, can you see? So you it renders. It is SVG, so you can zoom as much as you want. It's still proper vector. Uh, I mean, uh, if you, uh, you can, pr if you, if you print, it will show, oops, my bro, if you print, it, you just get the image so you can export to PDF. If you save as PNG, it renders as an image, and the image, oop, and the image is exactly the dimension you wanted, and, uh, and so on. If you want to change themes, because God knows that's important, yes, you have dark modes. Yes, you have other fonts. Oh, I don't have them installed. Why not? I don't know. So, uh, light. so themes and, uh, the, um, and you can type if you, so a uh, thing with uh, standard visualization. Okay. So the, the, the font is properly used here. Okay. Um, um, a thing, a thing is that you cannot f query the, in open way, 
from JavaScript page the, um, the fonts that are installed in the system because it would be a way to fingerprint the system. So basically, you need to either know the font on your system or uh, you, uh, you, you, this is uh, Commodore 64 font. So you need to know them, basically. Apple two fonts, I mean, if, you, if that's your style. And uh, so basically, it will adapt to your, to your style, and uh, it will, uh, lots, many structures are possible. Uh, it's another thing that is interesting is that it's not technically, uh, it's not technically, um, how do you say, uh, hex editor in the usual way. It doesn't have to, it doesn't display necessarily all the, the data, because when you take a screenshot, you know the uh, CD image. It has the 32 kilobytes of empty, uh, um, oh, sorry, maybe it's not readable. I changed the theme. <laughs> So let's try another one, Monolight. Is that readable? Too, loud, too bright, maybe? So in a, CD, in a CD format, the ISO format, it's like you have 32 kilobytes of emptiness, and if you would display that in a hex editor, then you would have 32 kilobytes of emptiness, and then eventually at uh, offset 8001 in hex, you have the signature. But here, you want to show that there's a gap, and this is exactly what's possible. You know, you just you just define the offset, and you just give the description, and that's you can explain the data you want in a meaningful way. And in a in a in standard hex editor, you wouldn't be able to do so. And uh, you, you can put your font, you can save as PNG, and so on and so on. So it's SVG, it's a selectable text. Even if you save at PDF, it will be still selectable. Um, so basically, it's not dead pixels. Uh, where is my phone? So, any questions so far? Oh, I'm speaking too fast. I don't have no idea how much time I have. So basically, try it. So it's, you just type. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Probably there's so much to try. But uh, it's all updated on the... Oh, why is the cursor? Uh, primary volume. You know, it's, it updates on the side. On the, on the side. It's updated with the side. But even if it becomes small, it's still SVG. So it's still actually just vector. So the moment you save it, you have SVG that you can zoom to any factor you want. And the moment you save as PNG, it will have exactly the dimension you set. So if you want all the screenshots to have exactly your dimension, there you go. You know, you, you just, and the, the beautiful thing is that once you did that once for a screenshot, and fun fact is that I'm presenting in a couple of days on file formats. And guess why these examples are there? Because there are my examples for other formats. And I just typed them once, and then I was like, oh, I want them to have this information, this knowledge, this information. And now I don't focus on the, is the screenshot perfect? I just typed that once, and then actually my font, for, my font style is this. Uh, and oh yeah, for, for the old school people, oh yeah, well, I tried the Commodore, I showed the Commodore and the Apple uh, stuff earlier anyway. So yeah, that's the, that's the idea. So you just type your information, it renders. It's very early, but I will improve it. So it takes JSON as input. Uh, you can type some JavaScript, which is a bit better than J JSON, but you could generate JSON in any way. And actually, yesterday, the author of FQ published a hack so that all his parsers could output data directly for that. And I also already use myself, uh, I mean, update. Outputting JSON is easy anyway, so it's the lowest common denominator for everyone. It's not just a picture, it's a SVG image, so it's like it can zoom at any scale, no blur, no pixel. Uh, the thing, the problem is that uh, it won't embed fonts, so if you want people to have the correct fonts rendered, then save as PDF, because PDFs embed the fonts inside the document. It's XML, so people are usually scared of XML, but you can either type it or you can generate automatically. And the good thing is that because it's XML, it's still live, you can post-process it or you can generate it in advance. SVG is a standard vector format. It's not something that goes crazy every year with new features and so on, especially because I'm getting quite uh, uh, standard with the way I use it, you know, like. And uh, I also the SVG I generate doesn't use as CSS or filters so that the PDF will also look the same. Because if you start to use C uh, SVG filters or browsers or web CSS, then the PDF will not will look different. And you can even convert it to EMF, which is the format that the vector format that you can use in Google Doc, Google Slides. So 
if you're curious about is process and SVG, post-processing and SVG, like you have your stuff and then you want to manipulate it, uh, you can do that with anything, but you can also do that. I, I made a workshop on the, on uh, Inkscape in the past. The, the, your input is just the import the your input is just the important data, so you don't have to retype the same thing twice. So just the binary content, the description, and optional highlights uh, requested by Eric, uh, so that you say, oh, this is my structure and this is my, where my signature hits. And it's not required, again, to uh, document every byte. You can skip uh, pieces of your of the content because you want to explain something. You don't necessarily don't want to show all the um, the bytes, the unneeded bytes, the garbage bytes, like you usually do with a hex uh, editor. So the structure is just a mix of strings and um, the actual bytes in, as numbers. Uh, JSON doesn't accept hex, hexadecimal, but initially you can input hexadecimal or even some functions. And then you have some special operators to just change the offset. Now, okay, you see that? So uh, at least now, this version of this bud fits a need, and it can adapt to different styles. Okay, you can tell that Java, JavaScript and browsers suck, but I wanted something that is instant, that uh, you want to produce something graphical without any required setup. I tried different things in the past, like uh, Cairo, SVG, and other things, and it's just JavaScript, so it just works, but it's not the craziest JavaScript. I'm still using the TypeScript check uh, convention so that uh, it's typed JavaScript not as strong as TypeScript, but at least you don't need to, com to compile anything. It's directly used. You can also argue that JSON sucks, which it does, but at least everyone can produce JSON even without a JSON library. It's very simple. And uh, you can directly use anything else to produce that JSON for you. So if you're not familiar, so uh, yeah, there are some differences, but there, are, there is a way to to go from native JavaScript to data, uh, object notation, to the actual JSON file, which is a bit more strict. And again, it's possible to just generate your own uh, JSON to, to use it in this bud, which is very ex um, useful. So uh, it's still experimental. There are no tests, no fuzzing. I'm still experimental graphically in terms of knowledge. If you're an expert in uh, JavaScript visualization, or JavaScript code, or this kind of thing. I mean, Rafa is definitely helping me, but you know, it's, everything might evolve, but at least I don't want my 120 dissections to go for nothing. I will not. And it's already pretty good, uh, pretty useful, you know? And a problem that you can be solved, as I mentioned earlier, is that you cannot enumerate the fonts. I don't know. The usual way to determine if a font is present is you render a font, you read there with the actual name of a potential font and you see if that has changed. If the font name is valid, it's like it's clumsy, I don't know, but you don't want you want to avoid fingerprinting of OS, which I fully understand. So it's a drawback. Uh, I have a lot of other plans to extend, not just the hex uh, with screenshot views, like just the source stuff where you want a colorizer, you have line numbers and flows, and then you want to say this is the declaration of that. We always always did it with some copy pasting of uh, code editor, and then we add the arrows ourselves. Maybe we could do something better. These are the stuff I'm looking for forward to implement in. So, uh, the railroad diagrams, timelines, uh, packets, uh, cheat sheets, periodic tables. All this can be generated in a way or another. We'll see about that. Just hold my beer. And um, yes, uh, do you have any questions? I don't know how, how long the time. Five minutes, okay. So uh, again, the idea is to have no more ugly screenshots, to just have m m you produce the minimum information. Oh yeah, it's open source, MIT, uh, MIT license, uh, minimum information for a nice rendering that you can update later for all our reports, for all our slide decks. Uh, type don't screenshot and bring your own team. And I'm looking forward to have suggestions and stuff. And uh, I have also myself a lot of stuff I want to implement. So <laughs> just hold my beer long enough. And don't get it wrong. It's not about shiny pixels. People say, oh, it's graphical stuff. What, what is this guy doing here? I mean, I know some people tell me, what are you doing in InfoSec? Why don't you go to a painting workshop or something, you know? 
And you get it wrong. It's because we struggle so much when we have to explain a file format structure to we just the basics of the P, P header, DOS header, pointer to P header. Usually we take the screenshot, okay, this guy is using a shitty X editor, oh, arrows, and then that cannot be converted to something, something else. And because we have this hassle of this hurdle initially, and then this is like, okay, we cannot reuse that anymore. We take that so much for granted. While if it was like a Yara rule of saying, this is what I want to explain, now we can post-process it once. I will have maybe, I don't know, hundreds of such examples. Hey, this guy. For, uh, also, when you have a screenshot like this, you just, by retyping the important information, it's much faster than you don't have to retype everything. I mean, if you just want to express the logic between the DOS signature and the PC, the, the DOS header and the P header. So basically, you make information more reusable that you can, suddenly you focus on the actual information content and not on the graphical need, details, you know? And the, the day you have a new manager and suddenly he wants his, the logo on all the slides, then, okay, that would be trivial to do, you know? So it's definitely not about shiny pixels or colors or whatever. It's about uh, information. So, yes? Oh, yeah, but... I, 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 yeah. First of all, congratulations. I think it's very useful. My, my immediate use case, you already responded, which is packet uh, dissecting and, and showing packets. I think it, it will be, for me, it will save me a lot of time. Uh, from our, what I understand, you input all the data that you want to show. Or you uh, generate it. Or generate it. Okay. Uh, let's say I have uh, a, a file uh, that some of the fields change. Is it possible to define what I want to show in terms of, you know, the, the intervals and the ranges, but just load the file every time I want to generate it, or do I have to do that process firstly myself? Well, you can generate all the versions and select the ones you want, or you can just uh, comment out, you generated the whole information, and you comment out the field that you don't want displayed, okay. and, uh, and you see the instant, do you see the result instantly? It's re regenerated every time you, you type something. Okay, so I, I cannot open a file yet. No, you cannot open a file. For, okay. So far, it's just JSON input. But you can generate that JSON input for anything. For anything, yeah. And okay. uh, yeah, that's a thing, right? Why do I, I? I did I did connect some parsers to 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 Zbud, but that's the thing. There are a few parsers already written in the world, and outputting JSON is not the hardest thing. So basically, I don't know. I mean, there are some stuff like bit fields that are not possible yet, but uh, at least for a lot of formats, it's possible. And uh, I, I'm in contact uh, the, um, with the, I don't know if you know, the Imhex uh, Hex Viewer. There is a JSON output. Uh, FQ also has a uh, now but output. So it's definitely possible to connect it to lots of parsers. And not, not necessarily parsers, because parsing is actually understanding, just dissecting, just the grammars in a 101 editor or a Sinalyze and all the other software. Excellent. Thank you very much, Ange. Um, that's time. Or is there any last? No? Yeah, that's good. You're good? I mean, Perfect. there are sl more slides. Uh. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, Ange, for this great presentation. <laughs>